In this heat transfer video lecture, we're going to continue talking about internal convection. Specifically, we're going to discuss how do we quantify Q, or the total rate of heat transfer when you have heated flow through a pipe or a channel. That's going to require us to develop something called the log mean temperature difference. So if you recall, in our last couple of video lectures, we went about deriving temperature profiles in a couple of different situations. That temperature profile gave us the mean temperature as a function of x. So this is the mean temperature, and we could calculate temperature as the fluid travels down the length of the pipe, which would be represented by x. So we did that for the scenario of constant surface heat flux, and we also did that for the scenario of constant surface temperature. Because this is heat tr transfer, this course is heat transfer, it's really important to know how to quantify the overall rate of heat transfer, or Q, in these different scenarios. So in this scenario where your flux is constant, this is actually quite easy. So we would be assuming that our flux um, unif is applied uniformly over the entire pipe or channel. So calculating Q would just be a matter of multiplying that flux by the appropriate surface area. So that would be the flux times the channel's perimeter times L, which would be the same as the flux times the total surface area of the, of the pipe or channel. So quite easy. It gets harder when our surface temperature is constant. Because when our surface temperature is constant and our mean temperature is changing, then our flux will not be applied uniformly. So it's not a matter of just doing some simple multiplication. So uh, if you recall, when we derived the temperature profile for flow through a channel of constant surface temperature, that profile looked something like this. If we had a surface temperature up here that is constant, we had an, a fluid inlet temperature, T, M, comma, I down here, we would expect that fluid to be heated gradually until you reached this point where eventually if the pipe were long enough that our fluid would reach the pipe temperature, again for a very long pipe. But you, at any rate, toward the end of the pipe you reach this point of diminishing returns where your driving force is low, so the heat added is much lower. It, we've treated convection, especially for external convection, a little bit more simply. We've used Newton's law of cooling. So our Q convection is equal to our average heat transfer coefficient times the total area times our surface temperature minus the bulk fluid temperature. Again, this is for external convection. And the difference for internal convection is that we don't have this infinite fluid that we can treat as being constant because as this fluid flows through our channel, it itself is actually being heated or cooled. So this is not constant. So for internal flow, this relationship doesn't work. We have to modify it. So one way that we're going to go about doing this is we can think that if we took a very short segment of a pipe, you could actually make the approximation that your mean fluid temperature is constant over that little section. So let's just look at that. So if we took this little short section of a pipe, let's say it's one millimeter long, yeah, it would definitely within this tiny little area, you could assume that T mean is constant. So you could apply Newton's law um, at that little, you could apply Newton's law locally and you would get a relationship that looked like this. So the convective heat flux would be H A, sorry, no A, H times T S minus T mean. And you could think of it, you could, I guess, come up with a differential area that you're applying it to to get a a DQ, but we won't worry too much about that. We could apply that same relationship toward the end of the pipe, and that re relationship would also be true here. That our local flux at that point is H times TS minus T mean. However, these two guys would not be equal because our driving force is different. We have a much smaller driving force toward the end of the pipe. So if we wanted to 
go about calculating the total Q, you could think of that as summing up all of these little DQs here. So if we were to break this up into a whole bunch of different sections, you could apply Newton's law locally and make the approximation that within that minor differentially small element that Tm is constant. So what this is going to imply is that we need to do an integration of some sort. So I'm going to walk you through the derivation of to, to come up with a form of Newton's law of cooling that would apply to this internal flow situation where your fluid temperature changes as a function of distance down the channel. Okay, so with that set up, um, we're going to walk through this. This is going to be similar to the derivation for the temperature profile when you had constant surface temperature, it, but at some point we're going to pivot and change that derivation a little bit because we want a different outcome from it. So when we have fluid flow through a pipe, we have fluid coming in at some inlet temperature and fluid going out at some outlet temperature. Without even really needing uh, heat transfer knowledge, we could just express the total amount of heat added to the fluid as this enthalpic change in, so if the temperature is higher, that means our fluid has more energy when it comes out. So m dot cp times t out minus t in. So this is a relationship that we would know to be true if we know that we're adding some amount of heat here that amount of heat that gets into our fluid could be represented by just looking at the enthalpy of our fluid coming out versus the enthalpy of our fluid going in. So that's without knowing anything about heat transfer. However, we may not necessarily know what T out is, so this may be an unknown to us. So we would need a way to complete this equation so we could actually calculate T out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and use Newton's law of cooling to derive another expression for um, the total amount of heat added. So if we do have this convective heat going in, um, we would take our differential element, let's say that it is dx units wide, and we're going to have energy going in and going out. So you could get to this result by doing the standard accumulation equals in minus out plus generation approach. I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut, and I'm going to say the differential amount of heat that you add in that element would be equal to, we're going to use a relationship that looks like this, but for a very, very short, um, infinitesimally short section of pipe. So the amount of heat that we added could be measured by this differential enthalpic change in our fluid, measured by MCP times the differential change in our mean temperature. We would want to apply for mathematical purposes, we're going to introduce this new variable called delta T, which we're going to define as Ts minus Tm at a particular x. So here's where our Tm is, here's where our Ts is. So that's our delta T. So using that definition of delta T, we can transform our differential variable to be in terms of the differential delta T. So dTm is equal to minus d delta t. So we're basically just differentiating this equation and doing a little bit of reorganization. We can take this relationship and apply Newton's law of cooling locally. So we would certainly have our h at that particular point times our delta t would give us the flux. To translate that flux into energy, we need to multiply that by the appropriate surface area. So the surface area would be the perimeter of our channel multiplied by dx. So this gives us a differential equation, and we're going to make this substitution that looks like this. We get minus m dot times cp times d delta t equals h times p times delta t times dx. So when we rearrange this equation to separate and integrate, we end up getting d delta t divided by delta t equals minus h times our perimeter 
times dx divided by m dot c sub p. So it's just a rearrangement of this equation. Now we have our variables separated and we can go about integrating. So we're going to want to integrate from the beginning of the pipe to the end of the pipe. At the beginning of the pipe, our delta t, because delta t is the variable that we're going to be integrating over. At the beginning of the pipe it's delta t i, and at the end of the pipe it's delta t at the outlet. So we are going to want to integrate this equation between those two limits. So we have delta t i at the inlet and delta t o at the outlet. And we're going to want to integrate this side from 0 to L. We're going to go the full length of the pipe. So doing that integration, we get, so this is d delta t over delta t. The solution to that is natural log. And we're doing this definite integral. So we don't need to worry about constants of integration in this case. But we end up with the natural log of delta t o over delta t i is equal to minus p l h over m dot c p. So we've gotten to this equation before when we were deriving the temperature profile. We took, so here you could calculate the outlet temperature by rearranging this equation. We're not going to do that. We've already derived that equation. We want to stop at this point and recognize we've got this equation and we've also got this equation. What we ultimately want to solve for is this Q convective. So we want to get Q convective in terms of heat transfer. So if you notice some of the commonalities of this equation, they both have this MCP in there. So if we solve this guy for M, M dot CP, we end up getting that M dot CP is equal to minus P L H over the natural log of delta T out minus delta T in. So now we can take that quantity and substitute that into here and we end up getting that Q convective is equal to minus P L H times T out minus T in divided by the natural log of delta T out over delta T in. And because of this, we can actually f make this a positive relationship. So if we multiplied the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by minus one, we can get rid of that negative sign and that would just require a little flip here. So we get delta T in at the bottom and delta T out at the top. Okay, so recognizing that P times L is just the total surface area, we actually get an equation that looks quite a bit like Newton's law of cooling. We have Q convective equals H times A. Hopefully those parts are quite familiar to you. And then everything else here is in terms of temperature. So this quantity is what we call the log mean temperature difference, the LMTD. This is also expressed as delta T sub LM. So what we've done is we have done this integration over the entire length of the pipe, knowing that T mean changes. And we have uh, done this differential energy balance and equated that um, using this overall energy balance to put this expression in terms of log mean temperature difference. So here is our driving force. So notice we still have a temperature driving force. Remember heat transfer is always proportional to a temperature driving force. So because our fluid temperature is changing continuously down the pipe, our driving force is changing. So we would use this more complex version of the driving force, which is the delta T log mean. And we actually were able to express this, so Q convection equals H A times delta T log mean, and this would be applicable for internal flow. 
So when you have the fluid temperature changing as a function of distance down your channel, you can still apply Newton's law of cooling, it's just that the driving force you use has to be a little bit different. So it's really important to remember this log mean temperature difference that looks like this. So the book expresses the log mean temperature a little bit different. They express both of these guys in terms of the delta T variable that we defined here. So that they rearrange that a little bit um, and we'll get to that here shortly. So for internal flow we still use basically Newton's law of cooling it's just that our temperature driving force takes on this different form when we have the constant surface temperature of our pipe. So um, the log mean temperature difference after we do these different rearrangements um, looks like this. So we take the delta T at the outlet subtract the delta T at the inlet, and remember that delta T was defined as our surface temperature minus our mean temperature at a particular x. So delta T outlet is just our this surface temperature minus Tm at the outlet, and similarly at the inlet it's T, our surface temperature at the inlet minus our fluid temperature, our mean fluid temperature at the inlet. So this Delta T log mean is a really important quantity to not necessarily commit to memory, but just know that when you have the situation and your fluid is changing temperature as it goes down the channel, you won't be using a simple delta T in Newton's law of cooling. Rather, you'll be using this log mean form of the temperature difference. So there is a really useful energy balance that can come out of this, as we alluded to earlier. So our Q convective can be expressed as HA times delta T log mean, but we can also equate that to our energy term that came just from doing looking at the enthalpy of the fluid and in and out. So both of these terms still apply. You could measure Q this way or you can measure Q this way. So if you get in a situation where you don't necessarily know the outlet temperature, so if our outlet temperature is unknown, then we have an equation. So we have one equation and one unknown and note, noting that our outlet temperature is built into here and we can solve this equation to get the outlet temperature. So this is really useful when we're going to talk about heat exchangers um, because you, you need to design a heat exchanger you may know the inlet temperature and you may need to get to a certain outlet temperature but you don't know how to build the heat exchanger or you may have a particular heat exchanger and you don't know what the outlet temperature will be so this relationship comes in really handy and basically all we're doing in in writing this equation is saying that the total amount of heat that gets added by heat transfer using our rate law Newton's law of cooling is equal to the total amount of internal energy that we're putting into the fluid. So our that energy ends up being absorbed into the fluid by changing its enthalpy. So a very useful relationship that you'll be applying um, as we discuss further on on internal convection as and as we get into heat exchange and heat exchangers.